Guys, um, so today um, we are going to cover retopologizing the old-fashioned way. And when I say the old-fashioned way, I mean not using any kind of auto retopo tool. In ZBrush, it's kind of famous for its retopology tool called ZRemesher. And there's some people that might argue that that's all you need. But if you're trying to make a player character versus a non-player character, you're trying to animate the main character in your movie or, or animate your facial expressions or make the character talk or any of that stuff, then ZRemesher doesn't really give you the topology that you need. So we're going to go over a better way to make topology today. Uh, having said that, I really want to see that you guys are in the Twitch chat. So as always, like, please just leave a message to tell me that everything is coming through loud and clear. You can hear me. You can see me. Just give me some kind of affirmation, man, please. Something. Some kind of a, you know, some kind of a proof that you're paying attention would be good. Just, just let me know you're, you're watching this. Okay, you can hear me. Good. Awesome. All right, so first thing to do is get this head into Maya. We cannot get the head into Maya at the current poly count of set almost 7.6 million. That's crazy, man. So we want to get this into Maya, and we need to get it to Maya like in the 10 or 20,000 area. So first step is to just, like, let's turn off our poly paint for the time being. Let's turn off our texture map and, you know, Let's get this down to a lower poly count, specifically by decimating it. Pay no attention to the weird eyes because they're not there, but we don't need the eyes. So please don't worry about the eyes. We're just worried about only the head. No eyelashes, no eyeballs, just the head and nothing else. Forgive my lack of sculpting on the ears. But anyway, let's move on. So what I want to do here is maybe go to a slightly lower subdivision level just so I don't have to spend as much time um, decimating. What we're going to use is the decimation master. So if we can already step down to something relatively low, let's go to, yeah, this is 118,000, relatively speaking. It's still pretty high for, uh, for Maya. And in fact, you know, you could maybe go one more. 473,000. So that's still going to be pretty high for Maya. So what do we do? We use this plugin called uh, Decimation Master. And if you want to, at this point, you can go ahead and duplicate the subtool because we know, of course, at this point, we always like to duplicate. For insurance purposes, we know this. We know it's a good idea. So now at 473,000 points, I want to delete my other subdivisions. Delete higher, delete lower. So now I have a, a mesh that looks like this. Control W will clear out my poly group. And this is kind of what my mesh looks like now. Still way too dense for Maya, uh, even at 473,000. That's just a bit much. So what we'll do is we'll use our Z plugin. We'll use our decimation master to decimate this down to like 10 or 20,000 or less. Um, as long as we keep the primary and secondary forms. Um, we don't need skin detail at this point. We're not worried about any kind of tertiary forms, just primary and secondary. So I'll click pre-process. This takes the data and it puts it into the RAM. Um, or maybe a cache somewhere on the hard drive. That might be true. So don't quote me on that. In other words, I'm not sure. I think it goes into the RAM cache specifically. But, you know, right down here it says delete cache. But um, again, don't quote me on that. There can be cash in the hard drive. Um, once it's processed, and we only need to process the head, so don't process everything, just the head, then we can click Decimate Current. And watch what happens. If I click Decimate Current, I'm going to go from this current 473,000 point count. Boom. Let's see what happens. You can see how the wireframe has changed dramatically. And now I'm down here at 94,000. Guess what? We can keep going. Because every time I click Decimate Current, it's going to try to get closer to whatever this percentage is. And so we can lower this. This is like 10% of the original point count. So you can think of it as removing 90% of the density. I click Decimate Current again. You can see the wireframe has changed. And now I'm down here at 47,000. 
Um, let's just keep going because, you know, I want to get closer to what? I can even click a preset of 20K. Look, that's even something else I could do. So I click, tw click 20K. Where am I? Yeah, I'm exactly at 20K. Does it look about the same? Well, it's not as smooth, right? But it does still have basically the primary and secondary forms. And I think 20,000 is probably good enough for Maya. So you can either continue to turn down this percentage if you want to, like 5% and click decimate, you know, or you can go with one of these presets down here. Um, as long as you're between 10 and 20,000 or, or around there, Maya should be able to handle that no problem. So now that we've decimated this and we can see the wireframe is a lot of triangles, now we can send this out to Maya as an OBJ or an FBX. I think at this point, everybody, hopefully you can agree with me that FBX is a bit safer. So the nice thing about FBX is, you know, if you send the eyeballs out and the eyelashes, they're all going to line up with the head. And with OBJ, I, I just can't really guarantee that. So I've kind of gotten into the habit of trying to use the FBX export because it's just more trustworthy. It has more data and less likely to have things misalign or have the scale screwed up. One thing about sending OBJs out, your scale has a tendency to get screwed up. So let's just avoid OBJ for the time being and go right for FBX selected export. Now, back to Maya. Do I even have it still open? Yes, I do. Okay, here's Maya. I was making some cool paint effects earlier. Some stylized rendering. If you're interested in that, it's in the previous Twitch video. So, you know, if you feel like you want to learn more about stylized rendering in Maya, you can totally do that. Um, I think for a lot of you guys, if you've just used ZBrush and you've used um, ZBrush... ZBrush for stylized rendering, you might find um, that uh, Maya's stylized rendering is kind of more complicated and difficult to use. And, and so, um, what? Let me close all this. And so, I feel like you get a lot more control personally using Maya's tune shading and cell shading and stylized rendering and all that but if that's not a if it's not a control thing you're after and you just want to like run the preset like i want it to look like blueprint then i would say yeah zbrush is definitely faster for that okay let's put on a default lambert material that's here in my rendering shelf i'll just select the head and make a default material that's this guy it's the lambert material so now we're kind of starting from our our default here um, there's bad news and there's good news here. The bad news is the mirroring is probably not going to work. So anything I do on one side, I'm going to probably have to do on the other side. I'm sorry to tell you. So we can't just mirror this. Even though the face is basically symmetrical, um, the mirror function isn't going to work unless you, um, well, you could try to put it in the center of Maya's global center and make sure the pivot point is centered. You might get there. I mean, if you guys, you know what? You can try. Let's try it. Control G. Control G makes a new group. This is important. I'll get to that in a second, but I'll call it head in my outliner. For those of you guys that don't know Maya that well, at the very bottom of my toolbar, the last icon brings up my outliner. So I put the head, which is actually already in a group, but I'm going to put it in a new group called head. Now, the reason I'm doing that Again, control G is because if I want to get it back, if I need to get it back to the original location, it's easy enough to do so. X allows me to grid snap, and I can grid snap to the global center. Probably want to rotate this guy too as well. And just try to get it in the center. I'm I'm gonna like attempt, I'm gonna make the old college try to try and get symmetry working, but I'm just gonna tell you up front that probably your symmetry is just not gonna work with scan data. It's just not, it's just not. So probably this is a little bit of wasted effort because I'm probably gonna end up having to re-topo, re-topologize 
uh, both sides. I'm just sorry. Sorry about that, but that's probably going to be what happens. All right. Anyway, he's pretty centered. So we can try using symmetry, but I really don't think it's going to do you much good. But let's now take the head, select it. Um, up here, uh, this uh, icon, actually it's the, ooh, there we go. It's the first one under the lock, uh, it, which is your channel bar, channel box. At the bottom of your channel box is the display layers. With the head selected, I click on this icon, it's like a white plane in a blue sphere. And that's going to make a new display layer. This allows me to turn the head on and off, the visibility. Also, T for template, R for reference. That means that I can't select it. So if it's in reference mode or if it's in template mode, then I can't select it. So let's get out of both of those so it's still selectable because I now want to make the head sticky. Um, I'm going to call this scan cleanup or sculpt, whichever, high res. Um, but now I want to make it sticky. How do I make it sticky? I make it live by clicking on this giant magnet. So I've selected the head. I click on the giant magnet. Now it's sticky. And by that, anything I do now will stick to the head, right? And at this point, if you want to make sure you can't select it, then go back into reference mode and we're finally good to start retopologizing. Um, you might want to bring in your reference at this point. So let's see. So I saved some reference, topology breakdown. Um, I don't care if you keep this up as a image, just on the side, just for reference, or if you want to load this into Maya, that's my preferred way of working. It's up to you. So just as long as you can see your topological reference. Some people will actually draw this onto the model in ZBrush, literally as a, as a poly paint lines. So that's a, even another way to do it. If you want to, in ZBrush, if you want to draw the lines on your model directly with polypaint, that's also another approach. Um, people do things differently. It's just totally whatever you want to do, right? So let's say uh, I want to use an image plane or image reference. So I can quit, uh, ah, excuse me, click down here, the quad view, that's this guy. So it's like this is your one perspective view. This is your quad view. And in my front view, I can go to select image plane and I can say import image. Then I'll open up the topology breakdown and there it is. I can actually even push this back. So let's see if uh, I'll push this reference back. So it's behind the head. And if you want to, um, you could even move it to one side or another if that helps you, just as long as you can really see that topology, however, you're, however you can do that. And you could even take a plane and texture it if you prefer. That's another option, just as long as you can really see the topology that you're after. So if we look at this, we look at this eye, we can start to count the edge loops from the, uh, the bridge of the nose out to the other side. So how many edge loops do we have here? Starting from the horizontal edge loop that goes across the bridge of the nose. Like, so if this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So then we should have eight loops around the top of the eye. So we'll zoom in. We'll then start to create these faces over here. This is the modeling toolkit. So I'll open that up. I like quad draw personally. There's a few different ways that you can do this, but I'm a fan of quad draw. So one, that's going to be one. That's that, that the one that goes that way all the way across the, the bridge of the nose. So we said eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and this one is horizontal again, eight. Now, these are obviously just floating dots. So how we connect them is holding down shift and that'll create a face. 
So shift left click, shift left click, shift left click, and so on. Oops, sometimes it can be a little stubborn, so you gotta just um, try to be more stubborn than the software, right? Once it's created, you can actually tweak these by just clicking and dragging. It's gonna stick to the mesh underneath. So if you need to tweak these after the fact, it's fine. Just click and drag. Uh, when you hover over it, it's gonna turn red. So, you know, that's totally cool. If you hover over something and move it that way. But we've got our eight on the side. Um, oh yeah, symmetry, uh, whoops. I didn't even try, did I? <laughs> Whoops! Well, I don't think it's gonna work anyway, but if you really did wanna use symmetry here, um, we can turn symmetry on up here. Symmetry on, say, object X. Uh, let's just try it for the lower one, for the lower loop. Um, and how many do we have there? Like, what are we looking at for the lower? Uh-oh, there we go. So then, Let's count these again. We have already eight along the top. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, looks like along the bottom. Oops, a little shortcut happy today. So nine along the bottom. Uh, let's try this with a, uh, oh, damn it, sorry. Let's try this with, um, with symmetry on, but I really think it's a bad idea, but you know, uh, we can turn your symmetry on object X or even topology maybe. Let's try object X and maybe we'll get lucky, I don't know. So we've got nine along the bottom. So let's just count one, two, three. Yeah, it's not doing it on the side at all. So we can assume that that symmetry doesn't work. You could try again topology, but boy, I don't think that's a good idea either. But you know, symmetry, it just, no. It's just simply refusing. It's like nobody, no way, no no symmetry for you. So just just keep it off. That's fine too. So we had nine, right? Not counting the ones on the side. So then, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wow. All right. Well, it's a little bit denser than I thought. I'm gonna go with it though. I'm gonna roll with it. Let's make our corresponding ones directly underneath. I know I said nine, but let's see if we can get away with, with this. So hold down shift, left click to connect all these. And now I have my, my final loop around the eye, right? So uh, let's do the other side and let's try at least to keep it the same, right? So eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight along the top. I want to try something a little different this time. I want to just sort of switch things up. Instead of always doing quad draw all the time, every time, which I still really like quad draw, but let's do something a little different. This time I'm going to use extrude. So I'll hit F10, I'll select the edge, and we do have like an extrude button, right? So turn quad draw off. First, select the edge, click extrude. And then I can kind of extrude this. And you might be thinking, why is that any better at all? It's not necessarily better. I didn't necessarily say that. I'm just giving you options. So F9 goes to my vertex selection mode. As long as I grab the circle in the center, you're gonna notice that this gold circle is always gonna to stick to the underlying mesh because of the magnet, it's still in live mode. So see, as soon as I move that, then you're gonna see what happens. So as soon as I move that, it's stuck to the eyelid. So whether you wanna use extrude or quad draw is up to you. If you feel like extrude is faster for you, uh, then you can use extrude and do it this way. But I feel like, because again, you kind of have to select the vertices and move them. And when you move the vertice, as long as you're dragging in the gold circle, it's gonna snap to the underlying mesh. Same thing with this. 
So again, just different ways to do things. I still feel like quad draw in this case is going to be a bit faster. So um, one, two, three, four. So let's keep going. Let's do eight. So this is five. Six. And already this feels a little wrong, but yeah. hold on, shift. Like so. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this should be seven. And then the last one that goes directly out is going to be eight. So that matches. Try to keep this as grid-like as you can. And again, remember, you can always tweak these after the fact. Just highlight, turns red, and then drag. So try to match everything as much as you can. Now, I know we didn't have like nine along the bottom like we were supposed to, but let's match this again. So one, two, three, four, four. Five, six, seven, eight. So we actually ended up having like seven along the bottom, actually, because this one edge loop goes kind of all the way across the head. So again, if we count this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's just try to match it. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. Um, let's get right there was one more. Oop. Yeah, and we can always reposition these. So you know, none of this is set in stone or anything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Try to make these grid like. I know that's, I've said this before, but you really do want to try and keep um, the topology as grid like as possible. So if you see things are getting stretched in weird ways uh, and you're not, you're getting kind of getting away from squares, then just tweak it. Just get back to those squares. You want to try to keep things equidistant, keep these kind of squares as square-like as possible, as opposed to long rectangles or triangles. All right, let's look at the bridge of the nose here. Let's just go across, um, and we can count here as well. So actually, before we do that, let's let's use extrude to our um, to our advantage. So what I mean by that is we can either extrude out the ring which might be faster. So watch what I mean. This is where extrude comes in handy. I double click the edge loop and click extrude. And then pull out the edge loop this way or the extrusion. Now, just like before, I know this is a little tedious, so you can decide for yourself if it's faster to extrude or faster to just quad draw, I don't care, as long as you know that it's sticking to the underlying mesh. Uh, I'm gonna use my um, Arrow key, so left arrow key moves to the next vertice. Left arrow key moves to the next vertice. Left arrow key moves to the next vertice. Why am I doing this? Because each time I move the vertice, as long as I'm clicking in the gold circle, then it's gonna stick to the underlying mesh. So you'll, you'll notice how it kind of like snaps to the underlying mesh. And this is again a function of it being live. As long as it's live, then that's, that's all we need to do is just move it just nudge it slightly. So use the arrow key, go to the next vertice, move slightly. Use the arrow key, go to the next vertice, move slightly, and so on. And if you're like, ah, I just want to use quad draw. I'm, I, I get that too. That's fine. So if you feel like it's faster than the other option, like I keep saying, of course, is just to do it this way. As long as you just try to match. Unfortunately, I mean, I'm sorry that symmetry isn't working, but that is again why scan data, you know, it's never going to be symmetrical. So, sorry about that. 
The good news is, is that once you create your retopology, though, your retopology, if you did it right, if you followed instructions, then your retopology should be symmetrical. So once you have good topology, animatable topology, then symmetry no longer becomes an issue because good topology should be symmetrical. You should have one edge loop that goes basically down the center of the head. Good topology not only makes animation easier, but of course um, makes UV unwrapping easier. Just makes life easier in general. So we always try to create good topology whenever possible. Still feels like we've got more loops on the left for some reason. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, this is right. That's absolutely right. Okay. So let's just keep going here. And I mean, uh, for the sake of sort of speeding things up a little bit, um, I'm going to veer a little bit off from my chart here a little bit. And I'm just going to kind of figure we've got how many roughly across the nose. Like, we'll say... Uh, uh, two from the inside of the eyes, then three, four, five, six, I think about seven to the inside. That seems like a lot, but let's just go for it. I mean, it doesn't have to be completely the same as long as um, it's following all the rules. So if you're modeling all in quads, for example, and you keep things as grid-like as possible. That's really the important part here. Sometimes it just like you gotta be careful. There is also a relax function. You might notice that it keeps telling me relax. If you hold down shift and go across like this, that's relaxing, you know? So hold down shift and go around your topology, it's gonna relax it out and again make it more grid like. See, so as I hold down shift, these squares become more square. The grid becomes more grid-like. So don't be afraid to just hold down shift and relax over top. Um, let's keep going. I feel like I probably need more edges, uh, more edge loops here, but I'm gonna just keep moving on. It's also okay, by the way, to, uh, to add an edge loop, instead of always extruding, you know, um, another way to, to add an edge loop is to hold down control. And if you hold down control, then you can add an additional edge loop this way by just simply holding down control and holding down control, and that creates an entire edge loop that way. So. Um, this is basically going to be the workflow. We just got to do the entire, the entire head this way. Um, so obviously this is tedious. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the whole head done tonight, or at least during this demo. It's already 8.20. But you, you definitely see what needs to be done here. So again, it's just a pick your poison thing. Like, do you want to extrude all this out? So if I hit uh, F10 or just turn off quad draw. By the way, you can turn off the visibility or even switch to template, for example, if that makes it easier to see. I don't know. Um, I like to turn on X-ray. This is under shading X-ray. And that might also make it easier for you. So if you are, again, going to use extrude, you can pick the edges that you want to extrude outwards. Shift-click 
to pick these edges you want to extrude outwards. And then use either the extrude function on the modeling toolkit. We actually also have an extrude over here under poly modeling, click extrude. It's the same damn thing. So I'll leave it up to you. But whichever one you decide to pick, um, I do want to warn you that you're still going to have to go and kind of nudge these vertices by clicking and sliding and that way you're ensuring that it sticks to the underlying mesh. You can use your arrow key to move over to the next one, use your arrow key to move over to the next one, use your arrow key to move to the next one, and you can see when this happens it actually pops to the underlying mesh. The mesh doesn't even need to be visible as long as it's live up here. Once this magnet is turned off, it's no longer sticky. You can't do this anymore. But arguably, this is faster, right, to use these extrusions. But again, arguably, some people are like, no, quad draw, thank you, that's fine. And, you know, it's about what is the faster tool for you. So if you feel like um, quad draw is definitely the faster tool, then sure, go with quad draw. If you're like, no, 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 I, I've done a bunch of rows of faces, you know, and so it, extrude is fine with me, uh, then, you know, that's uh, fine too. So instead of quad drawing all these points, in other words, I could just shift select these edges and extrude up. Again, there's the extrude button here, or there's also the extrude um, in your uh, in your polygon modeling. Let me turn the X-ray off because I feel like it's a little hard to see. Um, All right, so what about welding points together? Like these points should definitely be welded together. It's easy. Um, either hit F9 and select your vertices, or if you prefer, you can always right click, go to vertices that way. But just select the two vertices, go to mesh, go to merge, or under edit mesh. Where are you? Merge. Merge. Right there. And that merges those vertices together. So remember the object is still live, you can see because of the magnet. So as long as you move that circle, then again, it's still snapping to the mesh underneath, even though it's invisible. So even though the mesh is invisible, that's okay. I mean, if you want to turn the visibility back on, you can. Um, but because it's live, it's just going to always slide as long as you're using uh, the circle. So it's important that you click on that gold circle. We've got two vertices here that need to be merged. So let's, whoa, let's get them closer to one another. Oh my God. Uh, wow, I'd like you to go over here now. Uh, sometimes the live function fights against you. So it's okay to turn off the object, like the live function, just so that you can get the vertices close together and then merge again. Um, and uh, if you're going to turn the live function back on, of course, you need to reselect the head. Object mode, please. The reference needs to be off. So select the head, make it live again, and now it's sticky again, you know? Um, and so, go back to x ray, go back to this guy. So as long as it's sticky and you move that gold circle, it's going to stick to the underlying mesh. All right. Uh, if you want to, again, make this more grid-like because you're like, okay, that's nice and everything, but you're starting to get away from the grid stuff, then go back to your um, modeling toolkit. And as long as you're back on quad draw, for example, you can hold down shift to relax, hold down shift, go through here, relax all this stuff, try to make it as grid-like as you can. Um, 
All right. And rinse, wash, repeat. So in other words, more of the same. Um, so look at the loops that I have in the reference here. Note that we have two sort of gray loops in the bridge of the nose. Then we have kind of an orange loop that goes around that. So if you imagine this is my orange loop, this third loop up top, if you count this, then we want to make this all come back around. So as always, you can either use your quad draw to do this. And by the way, you can move these points also, even after you make them. Even these floating points can be moved. So just the same as before, hold down shift, left click. All right, that wasn't so hard. Let me pull these guys out a little bit. Um, so this is going to be your homework, obviously, just to get the whole head done this way. And do your best to follow your topological reference, but ultimately keep in mind that it, 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 this is just a rough outline that I have here. As long as you're following the rules that I've already given you, notably that you should be modeling all in quads, not triangles, not n-gons, but please quads. Uh, note that you um, should have all edge loops flowing with the muscles. So just like their eye loops that go around here, these eye loops are going to be what allows this to animate well or pose well. And that's why I'm paying really close attention to the loops around the eyes, and the loops around the mouth. And actually on that note, um, I could probably move on to the loops around the mouth. That's usually how I do this. I usually like first make some loops around the eyes, then make some loops around the mouth, um, and then connect them, like using bridge or something. So, mm, something feels a little weird over here, like, like maybe, uh, this is not welded. I don't, yeah, I think this guy needs to be welded to this guy. So here's a cool trick. If you take your two vertices and you select them, you want to get them closer together, you can scale from the center. So that's the gold box. If we scale towards the center, the vertices get closer together. See, now they're pretty close together, and now your merge function should work fine. Um, merge, 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 where are you? There's, I edit mesh merge. There we go. So this is the, your basic workflow, like I keep saying. Um, and I know it's a bit frustrating and a bit tedious, but this is why I saved it for your final and not for your midterm. All right. Who has questions for me, or should I just kind of keep going here with the mouth? You guys have some questions? <laughs> you can hear me. Well, can you still hear me? Questions? Anybody at all? Who's got questions? Should I just keep going? I'm gonna, I guess I'm just going to keep going. Um, let's look at the mouth here. Like, say something if you have questions, right? Please. Um, I'm going to go from the center to the corner. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wow, almost ten. Well, I think ten goes all the way out from the corner to the center. That, that to me, is a lot. But the closer you can get to, uh, to the original topological reference, typically the more accurate, the better these things are going to be. I'll turn... X-ray off again, and let's go back to our modeling toolkit and go back to Quadra. So I said ten. Was that right? Oh my God, that's so much. Um, so that includes the one in the center, I guess. 
If you would like to follow a more like step-by-step -step tutorial as opposed to just kind of like looking at your um, topological reference, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. let's go with eight. We can always add more. But if you're like, this is way uh, not comfortable for me. Like I really want a step-by-step. Uh, this, this is just too much guesswork and it feels a little too weird guessing at this topology. Again, the, the good topology is topology that animates well that's, and unwraps and do UVs well. And that, that's what's most important. But if you're that type of person that really wants a step-by-step, -step, I guess I can direct you to that old Joan of Arc tutorial. I'm just reluctant to do so because it's over 10 years old at this point. And even though it's a nice step-by-step, -step, it does create triangles, which I'm not a big fan of, especially not triangles in the cheek. But if you're like one of those people that you really, really want a step-by-step -step, and you're really intent on having the step-by-step, -step, oh, Kevin Costner, um, then Joan of Arc tutorial is definitely something that people have followed for years. I do feel like it's a little bit dated again because it's like 99, 2000, we're talking over 20 years now. So I definitely feel like it's a little dated, uh, again, specifically because we have triangles, but um, this may help you, right? Note again that the topology is actually drawn over top of the reference in this case, but it's the same idea. We're making loops around the eye, and then of course now loops around the mouth, and extruding and then bridging. So if you prefer to, to look at this step by step, you can certainly do that. This is starting off with actually far fewer loops. This is only uh, one, two, three, four, five, six on the top, one, two, three, four, five, six on the bottom. It's actually six and six. So fewer polygons means less problems. So then logically, the less polygons with the deal with, the better off or the easier things might be. So anyway. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's follow that again. One, two, three, four, five. Am I not going to have seven? I don't know. Once we get a loop that goes all the way around. Oh, Undo. By the way, undo is the Z button. Um, some people say it's the Control Z button. Actually, I'm, I'm kind of joking. It, it, it is uh, either one in Maya. In Maya, it could be Z or Control Z, so whichever. Um, all right. Now, I'm actually gonna make the gap here in the mouth already in, in the topology. I'm gonna pretend the distance between these points and this edge loop is actually where the gap in the mouth is, All right? So holding down shift and left click again. I'm literally gonna make the hole in the mouth kind of as I make the new topology. And there's a reason for this I'm going to explain in a second. I think I'm missing one right there. But as I said, if I hold down Control, I can always make a new edge loop. And I think that's really what... What I want to emphasize here is that control is going to make an edge loop all the way around. So if I get a loop that goes all the way around the mouth, it's really easy just to hold down the control button. I'll show you what I mean again in a second. Shift, left click. over and over and over and over. And we'll do like one more. Mm. I kind of want to count again. So 
So on the side, one, two, three, from the center, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And on this side from the center, one, two, three, four, five, oh yeah, six, uh, seven. This one's a little weird, so we can pull this in the corner. And the last one, this one, come on, there. So again, let's try to keep this grid-like. I'm gonna move this to the edge of the lip. And why the control trick is really useful is if I wanna have an edge loop that goes all the way around the inside of the mouth, all I gotta do is hold down control, see? And by holding down control, it's gonna make the edge loop that goes all the way around, which is not a bad idea. Easy. Um, I would just say, as always, select the vertice, nudge it, and make sure that this is all sticking properly. I think it is, I think we're okay. But try to make sure that all of your vertices are really sticking to the mesh and so on. Um, all right, I think they're, they're pretty good. So, let's go back to the modeling toolkit. Go back to quad draw. Where are we with time? Ooh, geez, almost 840. Um, so let's, let's try to do, uh, let's try to, to use like a slightly different method because I'm running out of time and I'm trying to speed things up, you know? So let's see what we could do here. Um, we can use something called Bridge. Um, they stole, whoops, they stole Bridge from 3D Studio Max. It wasn't in Maya once upon a time, many, many years ago. It was only available in Max, but now, now we have it available in Maya too. Um, here in this chart, we have one, two, three, four, five, I think five divisions. Um, I think we might have more on this guy, like judging from this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to go with seven to bridge the gap, right? So let's try this out. Let's see if we can make this work. So select this edge and figure out where you want to bridge it to. I'm going to bridge it over here. If we double click the bridge, bridge tool, um, it's going to tell us how many divisions that we could, we could give it. So we'll say seven, click enter. You hit the four button, you can see there's the bridge. It went all the way across. So do we want to do that just for one edge loop? I mean, let's do it for multiple edge loops, right? So let's instead select this guy, and this is where you kind of have to be careful about how many are you going to be able to get all the way across, right? So two, three, oh, this one, I got the whole loop somehow. If you need to turn on x-ray or whatever you need to do to make this a little bit easier to see, there we go, x-ray is a little easier, I think. So how far out is this going to come out here, you know? Is it going to go to there? You can try that. We can always delete edge loops if we need to, but by using bridge, we're going to get these guys working. So there's bridge without divisions. We'll add seven divisions. And we did that. Not that hard. And we'll do this to the other side as well. So hopefully this is making some sense for you guys. I'm trying to save you some time also. Um, and I feel like this is a, it's a pretty good time saver. So, one, two, three. Two of these guys. Bridge. By seven. Cool. Um, if we go back to our quad draw mode, don't forget, we can hold down shift to relax. And by holding down shift in this case, you might notice that it's actually conforming, notably, to the cheek. So by holding down shift, it is, see how it like kind of snapped a little bit? So it's actually conforming to the cheek. 
And now all we have to do is worry about um, doing the um, the nose, right? And we can also extrude upwards. How many do we have here? One, two, three, I would say, uh, maybe four until we get to the bottom of the nose. We'll say four, how about that? So then we can extrude upwards and these should match. So one, two, three to the center, one, two, three, four. So I actually don't need this edge loop. If there's an edge loop you wanna get rid of, shift select, shift right click, delete edge, you know? And so now the edge loops should match, meaning that one side should match to the next. And I know people are like, can we just use, please, please can we use Z Remesher? And I'm sorry, but it doesn't really produce the best results, especially not for uh, a, a more important character, i.e. you, as opposed to a non-player character, i.e. your friends and family. I mean, that sounded weird. I mean, the more important the character is, the more important the topology is, is what I'm really trying to say. So, okay. Um, <laughs> all right, so then uh, let's extrude. And then the real question is, do we want to bridge or extrude? Like, which is easier in this case? Do we want to extrude one, two, three, four times? Um, that's one option. But check it out, if we use extrude, watch this. If we use extrude, we can extrude all the way up to here. And maybe scale in a little bit also. So scale in, move, okay. And then, um, oh, actually, as long as you have your extrude box still open, so I guess that's really the important part. Click the extrude button. You should see a pop-up down here, see it? That's the pop-up I'm looking for. So, uh-oh. Undo this one more time. I'm running out of time. So extrude, but now after you've extruded, in the extrude we have divisions. So we can count, I think it's four divisions. Boom. All right? There we go. So that's cool. Now it's just a matter of sort of uh, smoothing this out. Don't forget if you're in quad draw mode, you can just hold down shift for relax and that, that's gonna go a long way to kind of smoothing this out a little bit. And you can't do it for everything, but it is nice, it makes things more grid-like and so on. But now we're at this point where we gotta weld all this stuff together. So then F9, select the two vertices you wanna weld. You can either scale them closer together or just try try merging without scaling. Uh, when I use scale, I just try to get the points closer together. That's the whole reason why I'm doing that. But I mean, if they're close enough together as it is, then your merge should work. Oh, and by the way, in merge, we have this option that says always merge for two vertices. So that's nice because if I only have two vertices selected, that's all I need to do. So I just select the two vertices. G in Maya repeats the command. So I select the two vertices, I hit G. And now that's done. All right, we'll do it over here. Same story. Select the two vertices, hit G. Select the two vertices, hit G. Select the two vertices. Yeah, you know where I'm going with this, right? Yeah. Select the two vertices, hit G. Um, this is kind of overlapping. We don't want these to overlap. So I'll just kind of slide this guy out. And then lastly, of course, we want to make this more grid-like. So if we go back, because we want this to be as grid-like as possible, so go back to quad draw, hold down shift to relax, and you can see as I do this, things begin to kind of pop more into place. Um, and I'm almost at the point now where I can start to, to worry about what the nose is doing. Okay, right? so... I think I have to stop the demo, though, is the only problem. I think I'm almost out of time. What time is it? Oh, yeah, we've got five minutes left. So um, uh, we got to worry about the nose, uh, but I did get a nice start on this. Uh, not, not too bad. Um, I can continue going with this to get the nose, but I'm officially kind of, I only have five minutes left, so I don't know. Do you guys want me to spend the last five minutes on this nose, or do you feel like you can, you can go from here?
Um, obviously, all I'm doing really is trying to match this as closely as possible. You don't have to be absolutely married to every single square and every single edge loop. Just try to get close to your topological reference and look at your rules. No n-gons, no triangles, all quads. Do the loops flow with the anatomy? You know, do the loops flow around the eyes? Do the loops flow around the mouth? Are we avoiding spirals? Like, these are the things that are really important. Um, nobody's saying anything in Twitch at this point. I gotta go. Okay, that's fine. I knew that already. Um, no questions. Um, well, I have five minutes left. Do you, do you, do you want me to, to try and do this nose, or can we just... Uh, can we just like assume that you can do this yourself based on your topological reference? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I do know we should try to keep everything the same from one side to another. So if we're moving these points on one side, then we should try to move the points on the other and always be just trying to match, right? As much as you can, one side to the other. So. All right. Um, I'm, out of, I'm out of time. I wanna, I wanna keep going with this, but I, I'm really kind of out of time. Um, we need, of course, for this topology to go down the center of the nose. Good old quad draw. By the way, this was originally a plugin that they turned into the modeling toolkit. It used to be called the Nex, N-E-X um, plugin for Maya back in the day. But at some point, I don't remember exactly when, but they just went ahead and incorporated it. Thank God. Um, it really does speed up things a lot. Tools like this quad draw are pretty nice. Always try to keep the edge loop that goes through the center of the head. Like there should be an edge loop that goes right through the center. Um, and that edge loop, by the way, should be perfectly centered or as much as you can center it. It's a little bit tricky, but you really want a straight line. So like this crookedness here is not really good. You really want this line that goes to the center of the head to be as straight as you can possibly manage it. And, you know, how do I make a line straight in Maya? I guess I'm going to end with that. I'm not quite done with the nose yet. Obviously, there's still more. We've got to look at the top a lot. We've got to look at how the top of top, topology, sorry, wraps around the nostril. So that's kind of the next step here is to really examine how this topology wraps around the nostril. Obviously, extrude into the nostril as well. Let's, uh, let's maybe do this, maybe, at least. I still have a lot more to go, but I do have to end this demo very soon. Sorry. But I, I hope this helps anyway. Um, so anyway, yeah, the, 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 the center uh, edge loop that goes right through the face in the center which this is clearly not centered. We really want this to be centered. How can I manage that? Um, let's go out of the modeling toolkit and sort of hide this for a second. If I can select this edge loop that goes right down the center of the face like this, and I really want it to be centered, the trick is to scale um, towards the center, always towards the gold box. You can double click the scale and switch the axis orientation to say object, for example, or um, component. But either way, we really want it to always be scaled towards the center, 
Now, you may have to turn off the live function at this point because like, this may be breaking the process. Uh, no, it's not really working down here. I'm just gonna deselect these for a second. And again, scale towards the center. So if you can scale towards the center from the perpendicular axis, that's gonna straighten this out. I'll try to do it separately on the bottom here. Um, I don't like how this is at a weird angle and it's because of the axis orientation. So if you can switch this to object or even world, ah, there we go, so it's nice and straight, then again, scale towards the center, scale towards the center. And in that way, we can make sure that we've got a perfectly straight line that goes right through the head. Um, I think I'm out of time at this point. Um, if you want this to have like a softer look to it, you can go to Mesh Display, Soften Edge. Um, and you can see that I'm on my way to retopologizing the head. I'm, I'm getting there. Um, I just hit the three button to turn on smoothness, but definitely a pretty good start. I kind of knew I wasn't going to get through the whole head, but um, I'm out of time. So I'm going to stop this demo and I'm just going to have to do this retopo for homework, just like you guys. So I will, if you'd like, I can make another video out of the rest of the head. Um, I'm totally game for that. So if you'd like me to continue this in a, in a separate demo where I finish the rest of the head, that's fine too. I don't mind if that's what you would prefer. Um, but I do have to stop now because we're out of time.